Hello and welcome to St Matthew's Church, Park Hill Croydon, on this fourth Sunday of Lent, Mothering Sunday. And today is a bit different from the norm. We decided not to have a Eucharist today, but to have readings and hymns and prayers as we think about uh, our mothers, as we think about our God as like a mother, as we think about the Mother Church. And I will be giving some short reflections following each reading, and Alison will be taking part from home. And I hope that whatever your own circumstances, because for many people, Mothering Sunday is a difficult day. As we think about our own mothers, we think of those who've lost their mums or those who've had difficult relationships with their mothers. May we all know that God is with us and that he is tender-hearted, compassionate, protective and caring towards us as a mother is towards her children. So let's begin with our call to worship. Come, worship the God who said, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. We will come before our God. And so let's sing that great hymn, Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord. And now we confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. We have all done what is wrong in the Lord's sight. Yet as a mother comforts her child, so shall the Lord himself comfort us. So let us come to him who knows our every deed and thought. As a father is tender towards his children, and a mother is tender towards her children, so is the Lord tender to those who fear him. Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. Lord, forgive us. Lord, 
forgive us. I have calmed and quieted my soul. Like a child upon its mother's breast is my soul within me. Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive us. May we receive in our hearts the forgiveness God promises as a free gift of his grace. Amen. A pause for us own silent prayer. The Collect. Lord God, we thank you because you are kind and tender towards us as a parent towards their children. As we celebrate Mothering Sunday, draw us closer to your gentle love and help us to be loving to everyone we meet. In Jesus' name, Amen. And now we have our first reading from Exodus. This morning's first reading is taken from Exodus chapter 2, reading the first 10 verses. During this time, a man from the tribe of Levi married a woman of his own tribe, and she bore him a son. When she saw what a fine baby he was, she hid him for three months. But when she could not hide him any longer, she took a basket made of reeds and covered it with tar to make it watertight. She put the baby in it and then placed it in the tall grass at the edge of the river. The baby's sister stood some distance away to see what would happen to him. The king's daughter came down to the river to bathe, while her servants walked along the bank. Suddenly she noticed the basket in the tall grass and sent a slave woman to get it. The princess opened it and saw a baby boy. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked her, Shall I go and call a Hebrew woman to nurse a baby for you? Please do, she answered. So the girl went and brought the baby's own mother. The princess told the woman, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So she took the baby and nursed him. Later, when the child was old enough, she took him to the king's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. She said to herself, I pulled him out of the water, and so I name him Moses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as we think about this, this wonderful story of how uh, Moses was protected and kept hidden and then rescued by Pharaoh's daughter and nursed by his mother. It's a, a great story that we can think on and reflect about how God protects and watches over us. God's plan and purpose was, of course, to, re to raise Moses up as a great leader of his people. And at those times, Pharaoh was determined to destroy the people of God, to not let them flourish. And he gave an order to the midwives to uh, kill baby boys when they were born. And then when they refused to do that, he told people to throw the babies, male babies, into the river Nile. But instead, Moses' mother made a boat of papyrus and coated it with tar and hid it among the reeds. And then um, Pharaoh's daughter comes and rescues Moses and then calls for the mother and says, I will pay you uh, in order for this child to be nurtured and brought up. I don't know how many mums get paid for breastfeeding their own children, but on this occasion, that's exactly what happened. And we see in this story the wonderful, caring nature of God as mother and as human mothers care and nurture their children, protecting and looking after them and watching over them and keeping them safe. Moses was kept safe and uh, he rose to be perhaps the greatest leader in the Old Testament. So we give thanks to God for his plans and purposes, which are for each one of us to raise us up. Plans to give us hope and a future, plans to bless us, to nurture us, to care for us. And we remember all that mothers do for their children. 
in nurturing and caring and protecting. Amen. Now we sing the hymn, God of Eve and God of Mary. Now we come to our second reading, Psalm 127. Second reading, Psalms 127, verses 1 to 5. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the God keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. Sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are sons of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them, he shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in this psalm, we're told that unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. This is all about God building his people, protecting his people, keeping watch over his people. But he reminds us in this psalm that we have to rely on him. It is our God who builds us up. When human beings think they're going to take control, it's then that trouble strikes. And this moves seamlessly between um, the house, the builders of the house, the city, the guards of the city, and then into families, how children are a blessing to the family. And of course, in Old Testament and New Testament times, children were essential to look after and to nurture and to protect those who are getting old. And if you had no children, it was a disastrous set of circumstances because who would care for you when you needed to be cared for? And of course, the answer comes from heaven that God will care for us. And that although there are people who now choose not to have children for very good reasons, and we know that the state is there to help us and to protect us and to, to um, look after us when we get old and incapacitated, nevertheless, it is still the case that families are the building block of society. And we need to nurture and take care of families and look after those who are vulnerable. So God is the one who blesses and nurtures and keeps us and let us allow him to build us up. And of course also this can refer to the house of God as a church, the church of God as a house. 
God wants to build his church. God wants to strengthen us. God wants us to know him and to love him and to serve him in this world and to be a sign of his goodness and his grace and his presence with us. So let us pray that God will build his church, will build his house, and we know that we are by grace members of his people. Amen. And we sing the song, Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant. thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for all who care. Bless them with your love. Thanks for mothers everywhere. Bless them with your love. For those who brighten up our day, bless them with your love. Who always have the right words to say, bless them with your love. Thanks for hugs and love and smiles. Bless them with your love. Thanks for all those extra miles. Bless them with your love. And when they feel they're not enough, bless them with your love. Amen. And now we have our third reading from Colossians chapter 3. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, 
Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in this third and final reading, Paul gives us a beautiful vision of life within the church, life based upon love and forbearance and patience and forgiveness and all those great qualities that each one of us needs. But it's also, of course, a picture of life in a family. We all need to bear with each other. We all need to be patient with each other in every relationship. And of course, in our closest relationships, those we spend the most time with, those we care the most for, these qualities are absolutely vital in order for families not to uh, pull apart or even to break apart. I guess we've all been saddened by this, what's been happening in the royal family. And uh, I don't want to say very much about it, but just to say that I think we need to pray for Meghan, for Harry, for the whole royal family, because how hard it must be to live their lives under such a spotlight of the media. And it's easy to blame, of course, either the media or the firm or the institution. But it's tough. In any, any family, it's difficult. Every family has its idiosyncrasies, its foibles, its faults, its failings. But when those faults and failings are, are watched over by sometimes a media that simply wants sensation, then no wonder things can go so badly wrong. But let's pray that there will be healing, that there will be hope for change and for a better future. And if every one of us listens to these words from Paul, above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. A mother's love is such that she will do anything to protect her child. When you see pictures of, of uh, mother hens looking after her chicks and um, parents looking after their children, I can think of two particular instances where there was uh, a fire that raged and, and destroyed some woodland. And uh, when they were clearing up after the fire, they found the body of a, of a hen and underneath were chicks that were still alive. The hen had covered them with her, with herself, with her wings, and they managed somehow to survive the fire. And of course, she perished. And another similar illustration, where I remember there was uh, a plane crash, and uh, a mother had bent over and cradled her child in her lap, and uh, the child had survived the crash, and sadly, the mother had not. I think there's that just such a strong instinct to protect at all costs, no matter what, because we love our children. We love those whom God has given to us to nurture and care for. Amen. Now we sing the hymn, Come down, O love divine, seek thou this soul of mine.
Oh, I'm sorry. I seem to have come to the wrong house. No, you haven't. I have. I came to visit my mother. I know. Oh, flowers. Mmm, they smell wonderful. Thank you. Well, don't just stand there. Come in. Come in. Tea or coffee? Uh, neither, thank you. Look, I'm sorry, but do I know you? A little, I think. Yes. How? Well, in lots of ways, but perhaps most obviously because you're my child. Excuse me? You're my child. You don't take sugar these days, do you? No, I don't. Look, if I was your child, you would be my parent. That's right. Most specifically, my mother. Indeed. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, you're not. And as this conversation's getting a bit weird, I think I'll be on my way. Could I have my flowers back, please? You're right. I'm not. Actually, I'm both. Both what? Your parents. I'm both your father and your mother. And I'm also neither one nor the other. Okay, getting even weirder now. So as I say, very nice meeting you. And what did you say your name was again? I didn't. But seeing you've passed, I'm God. Are you? Excellent. Well, have a nice day, God. And good luck with sorting out the mess we're all in. Bye. You don't believe me, do you? Honestly, no. Why? Well, for starters, I don't know if you'd noticed, but you're a woman. Am I? Yes, sorry. Is that a bit of a shock? No. And the thing is, traditionally, God's a man, you see. Is he? Yes, well, male at least. And if you were God, which is quite a big if, although I'm sure you'd make a terribly good God if the job became vacant. But if you were God, you would know he is male, because you tell us that in the Bible. Do I? Yes, so as I say, lovely to meet you, but I really have to be going. I also say I'm a rock, and a fortress, and a shepherd, and a vine. So? Even a king. Meaning? I've given you pictures. Many things are pictures of me, including your father and your mother. Test me. What? Do you love your mother? Of course I love my mother. Well, everything you love about your mother comes from me. She does nothing without me. What? Even her cooking? Especially her cooking. Her apple and blackberry crumble with the secret ingredient. Ah, oh, now that's special. I know. I am the secret ingredient. I know something she did without you. What's that? Give birth. Oh, if only you knew. I was the last push. The last ounce of energy that she didn't know she had. Try again. When I woke in the middle of the night with a bad dream? I was the softness in the notes that she sang you back to sleep with. And remember your first day at school when you ran after her? I still relive that when I go into board meetings. I was the courage in her eyes when she told you to go back in. And when I fell off my bike, you weren't there then. I was the speed in her feet and the strength in her arms as she lifted you free of the oncoming car. And when she caught me playing matches in my bedroom? God doesn't use that kind of language. I was the care behind the anger and the love behind the fear for your safety. Aha, here's one. When you first fell in love? Let's not go there. I was the knowing look on her face and the tenderness in her eyes. I was 10 years old. You were in pain and she understood. And a few years later, on your first date? No, please, we are definitely not going there. I was the inspiration behind changing the electric green shirt to the pastel blue and also buying you a deodorant. Where were you when my heart was broken? I didn't see you then. She and I held the pieces and wept quietly together in her room. Remember when you lost your job? Dark times. I was the squeeze in her hand and the faith that she restored in you when you had none in yourself. So when you see your mother, you catch a glimpse of me. You love her because she's made in my likeness. So you are female after all then? Pictures, I've told you. I am the firmness in the rock, the safety of the fortress, the protector in the shepherd, the life in the vine, the majesty in the king, and the love in your mother. These are all pictures to take you so far. But to find me, you must step through them and go beyond. Now, it's time you went. Your mother will be waiting. Here are your flowers. 
Don't you want them? If you give them to her, you'll be giving them to me. One more question. Oh yes, there always is. Will you be there at the end? Of course. I will hold your hand very tightly, like she used to when you crossed the road. Then I'll bring you safely home. Here, don't forget your flowers. Mmm, they smell like heaven. One last thing. Yes? Can I have the new PlayStation for my birthday, please? I have no idea. Ask your father. I like to leave the harder questions to him. Well, I don't know about you, but I found that sketch really touching, very moving. And I just want us to spend just a couple of moments reflecting on what, uh, what we've listened to and maybe uh, chuckled over as well. Because we think about us as created in God's image, male and female. We know that God is both male and female, above and beyond gender, of course. But male and female both reflect God's nature, his care, his love. And the wonderful truth is that, that when we are in trouble, when we go through tough times, when life is difficult, when we're hurting, God not only looks upon us and understands, but he genuinely feels our pain. Mothers, and I'm sure fathers too, feel the pain that their children are going through because of that bond of love. As we think about the bond that mothers have with their children, a bond that begins in the womb, and a bond that is sustained through pregnancy and then through birth. And then the, the cutting of the umbilical cord, symbolizing that breaking free of now this human being becomes its own person, but of course still needing the love, protection, feeding, caring, cleaning of a mum and a dad as well. But that process of growing up and growing away and becoming an independent person is a, is a process that parents, and I guess especially mothers, oversee over time. But God truly feels our pain. He is there with us. And it's often at the worst and lowest moments of our lives, when we feel furthest from him, that we need to remember that he is not far from us. There's a wonderful verse in Isaiah where the Lord compares himself with the mother and he says, can a mother forget the baby at her breast? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Yes, it is possible. And tragically, sometimes it happens that parents reject or abandon their children or fail to love them, are unable to show that care and that nurture. But we know that's a real exception, that the vast majority of parents truly love their children, no matter what. But God says, even though theoretically her mother may forget the baby at her breast, but how could she? But theoretically she may, I will never forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. And that reminds us immediately of the nail prints from the cross, where Jesus shows his love for us. So no matter what we may be feeling today, how we are in ourselves, God loves you, he is with you, he feels everything that you are going through, he is sharing it with you, and he wants to help you, and to protect you, and to bless you. And when we entrust ourselves to him, when we allow his love to clothe us, then we are truly who we are meant to be. So we give thanks to God for mums today, for all that they have done for us, all the pains that they went through, because every single one of us caused our mother's pain when we, were, when, when we were born. And yet the joy that follows childbirth is unparalleled. And so we give thanks to God for our mums, and we entrust them into his care. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Alison's going to lead us in our prayers. And now we come to our intercessions. Loving God, you who are both mother and father to us, 
In this time of prayer, we thank you for your love. We thank you for Jesus, who taught us of your all-encompassing parents' love, the love that waits with anxiety for us to return home, the love that also runs down the road to gather us in your arms, the love that searches until we are found, that loved us so much you sent us Jesus. We thank you that we are your children, called by name, called even before we were formed in our mother's womb, called into your worldwide family, where there is such diversity, such individuality, such creativity, such beauty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that rejoicing in the diversity of humankind, we might always love as Jesus loved us, that we might always appreciate others of different faith and cultures, asking pardon for the times when we have failed you in love. Remembering the worldwide family we are so much part of, we pray for places around the world where parents suffer great hardships in finding clean water and nutritious food for their children, where they can't afford an education for their children, and where daily life is a struggle due to the selfishness of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for our own families, remembering especially our own mothers or those who stood in there in her place who took care of us, who met our needs, not only nurturing our bodies, but also in love and security. For the love of those who are still with us and for love that is in your nearer presence, we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for mothers at the start of adventure of motherhood, that you will give them all they need. For mothers who are stretched in patience and love, who find things hard with too much to do and not enough time to do it, with babies who don't sleep or children with special gifts, running out of energy and patience. For mothers whose children do not have clean water or enough food to eat or proper medication. For mothers experiencing miscarriage or babies stillborn or those unable to have children, that their motherly natures would be used in nurturing others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord God, in you we find life, health and strength. Through your gifts we have everything we need and so we bring our offerings to you. Take them and use them and use all our good intentions for the growth of your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we're going to sing the Caribbean version of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Bye. 
and we say together a prayer for mothers. Thank you, God, for the love of our mothers. Thank you, God, for their care and concern. Thank you, God, for the joys they have shared with us. Thank you, God, for the pains they have borne for us. Thank you, God, for all that they give us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So now we sing our final hymn. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. So as the rain falls on the roof of the church, I don't know whether you can hear it or not, but it's raining at the moment. As we come to our blessing, may I say once again a very big thank you to everyone who has taken part in today's service. Thanks again to John for all that he's done in bringing it together. And may we now open our hearts to receive God's blessing. May the Father, from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and that knowing his love, broad and long, deep and high, beyond all knowledge, you may be filled with all the fullness of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those whom you love and all those for whom you pray this Mothering Sunday and forevermore. Amen. May we remain in the love, the joy and the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.